What would Cook make the Jets, you think? I don't think the Jets should get Dalvin Cook. Uh, the Jets, listen, Brock, the Jets are a Super Bowl contender. All right. As of right now, they are a legit, bona fide Super Bowl contender. The reason why I say don't get Dalvin Cook is I think Brees Hall has got the chance to be the next Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, um, Alvin Kamara type of impact. This is a young man that, one, they went up in the draft to get two through seven weeks last year, led the NFL in yards per, from scrimmage. And I understand he's coming off of the ACL injury, but the timing of that ACL injury does mm -hmm. matter. He's a guy that you're going to want to get the football a ton to as this season goes on. We only get 11 in football. Yeah, and as, as much as I love Dalvin, Dalvin's a very good player. If I'm the Jets, I'm sitting there going, as good as we think Dalvin Cook is, we've got a player in Brees Hall that we mm -hmm. need to make sure that as we get into October, November, December, and he starts to really get healthy, we're getting him 15 to 20 touches a game because he's that dynamic of a player. I will say it again. I think he's going to have – has the potential to impact the game the way that McCaffrey does, the way that Alvin Kamara does, the way that Austin Eckler does. So it's not a knock on Dalvin Cook. It's more of what I believe Brees Hall is for the New York Jets. Listen, I did a number of Brees Hall's games at Iowa State. Mm -hmm. They call him beast for a reason yeah. because he is. But aren't those backs better? And you know athletes better the season after they come after that, that – that, those type of uh, ACL injuries. So I guess my what I'm saying is he's going to be good this year, but he still won't be as good as he will be the year after. And uh, I will say, to Dan's point, I was there when the Jets drafted Brees Hall, and I remember talking to Robert Sala, like the home run hitter, like he was so excited about adding this kid. So I understand why the Jets are very happy with their roster, thrilled with their roster right now that they've got the quarterback in place. Brees Hall is dynamic, and when he got injured, I mean the deflation – because the Jets could see between Garrett Wilson and adding, adding uh, Brees Hall, they're like, we are fast everywhere. So to lose him was devastating for them. So to get him back, uh, clearly they're really excited. Yeah. So, and, and, so, Dan, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to get Dalvin Cook for this upcoming season because you know Brees is going to be even better the season after, maybe not this upcoming season because he's just coming back, obviously, from that knee injury. I still believe that if you're the Jets and you think that Brees Hall is on target and on track with his recovery, then he's your guy this year. That what Nap, right? The end, next season doesn't matter in the NFL. It, it is a year-to-year -year league. I mean, it's a it is a week-to-week -week league. The the last thing that I would say on this when it comes to the Jets is, could you imagine if you're the Dalvin Cook's not signing for league minimum, right? You know right. what I'm saying? Like he's he's going to demand a decent amount of money. They're trying to lock up Quinn and Williams. So if you're the Jets, you can't take whatever million, two, three, five plus million dollars it would take to sign Dalvin Cook and give that to him without making sure that you have absolutely secured Quinnen Williams. So the way I look at it is having Quinnen Williams locked up and making sure that Brees Hall continues to be a focal point of your offense is more important than signing Dalvin Cook. You also have Michael Carter, who you drafted two years ago, who had a pretty good rookie year. Not as good last year, but their offensive line stunk. So I think that Dalvin Cook, while is a very good player, um, the Jets should pass on. Here about the NFC North, all I've heard about are the Lions. Lions. Yep. And people will say, well, well have you heard about Justin Cruz. Jefferson? Yep. Uh, Minnesota, they're still going to be there. Do you agree that Packers are a playoff team? Uh, I, I don't know about this year. I, listen, the, there's tremendous amount of pressure on Jordan Love right now not only does he have to step into Aaron Rodgers shoes those are huge inside that building the confidence I can tell you is really high in him the athleticism the talent yes he sat for a while but here's the thing like players in that building have said publicly like especially on defense we know we have a dominant defense but we also have to be even better to account for the fact that the margin for error is going to be slimmer with a young quarterback. Listen, Jordan Love, in my opinion, has been put in a very difficult position. Yes, he's, rest yes, he's sat and he's watched, and I think that could benefit him. But he's a guy that his development was stunted based on this whole Aaron Rodgers saga. So, yes, I believe in Jordan Love's talent. To say that they're a playoff team this year seems – I don't know if I would go on board with that just yet. I think this is a team next year for sure. But they've got a good roster. It all depends on how Jordan Love plays, and, and we haven't seen it yet in totality. Go ahead, Dan. 
I, I think he's in a great situation. I would say this to the defensive players who say they got to be better. Yeah, because you guys weren't good last year. You, that, that's why you guys didn't win games last year. You're too talented because you guys played too soft. And I don't mean that like mentally. I mean that scheme wise. I've said that for two years now. You got to go challenge people. I, I, this is what we know about Jordan Love, first round draft pick. Now, we don't know if other teams had him as first-round picks, but he was a first-round draft pick. Got to sit for three years. Super talented guy. Playing behind an offense that naturally or normally gets guys to elevate their play. He's got Christian Watson, who's a burning but a burdening, but burdening star. Burgeoning? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Romeo Dobbs <laughs> is going to be a very good player. Jaden Reed, they drafted out of Michigan State. They draft Luke Musgrave, a vertical tight end um, down the seams. And they got two good backs, still good in offensive line. This is a really – this isn't as good of a place as Jalen Hurts had in Philadelphia last year, but this is a very healthy place for a quarterback to go play. If Jordan Love doesn't stink, this is a good – this is a team that should win 10 or 11 games. And I don't think there's any chance that he stinks. Knowing what this offense is like and how talented it is, I, I, I think he's in a very, very favorable situation. So if you had the GOAT and it took him almost half the season to get on the right page then with this talented offense, mm -hmm. why do we think Jordan Love is going to come in there and put up numbers considering we it to be the first time? He very well could be, and I think uh, you're confident in the kid's ability. My only point is we just haven't seen it for 17 games. That's all. So the jury is still out. Yes, they have pieces. The Jalen Hurts of it all, he walked into a situation where he was not the guy. He was not – he came in and was supposed to be competing with Carson Wentz, and he wasn't replacing a Hall of Fame-type caliber quarterback. And I think that's the difference. The way the whole Aaron Rodgers saga played out and that they moved up early to draft Jordan Love and then were like, whoa, wait a minute, we're going to go back to Aaron Rodgers. I think that's what I mean about the difficult position because – it's his team now, and if he falters early, we're going to be talking about, Jordan Love, is he ready? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's interesting. That's all right, all right Dan, I got to get with you because which NFC North quarterback would you want then this season? Let's talk about your list here. Oh, Jared Goff. Uh, Jared Goff's going to play top 10 football again this year. This is an offense in Detroit, number one. Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator, is, is you know, top five play caller. Uh, he's not Andy Reid. He's not Sean Payton. He's not Sean – but he ain't far off. This is a top three offensive line. Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be a top ten receiver in this league. Um, I think Jameer Gibbs, their draft pick out of Alabama, is going to go for 1,500-plus yards this year. This is what I know about Jared, and I've spent time with Jared. When Jared is protected, he could throw it as good as anybody. I, when he's protected, he could throw it as good as anyone. And that's the biggest question for a lot of quarterbacks. And I can guarantee you this, in Detroit – he is going to be protected. If that's the case, then rank your teams. Rank these teams in in, in the north. Uh, it's Detroit. It's Green Bay. It's Minnesota. It's Chicago. I think all four have questions on their defense. I just talked about Detroit. I think Aiden Hutchinson takes another step. D Green Bay, it's just about is Jordan Love good or not? I think he's going to be a good player. Um, I think Minnesota's got questions on defense specifically in their secondary. And then Chicago, again, on defense, still young. Justin Fields will have a much better season. I think he plays at MVP level, but it's still talent-wise a depleted roster. Mm, got about 20 seconds came up. How are the Packers then making the playoffs? Now, I'm just curious, based off – because who in the N NFC, I'm just looking at the teams. If we th we're high on the Lions, right? I'm just curious how the Packers make it. I think that Philadelphia is in. I think Dallas probably should be in. Somebody from the NFC South is going to get in. Yeah. Um, the NFC – uh, West East is going to be probably San Francisco and Seattle. So there's another spot or two for a team like Green Bay, for a team like the Washington Commanders, if you get two out of the South. So, th again, they're a playoff contender, Green Bay, absolutely. How about Melvin Gordon? Mm -hmm. He was teammates with him at Wisconsin with the Broncos last season. He said this on the Jim Rome show when asked if Russ has anything left in the tank. Quote, yay, dude. And he has an MVP coach. I think they got the pieces there now that's going to put Wilson in the best situation. What he does this year, it's on him. But I definitely believe they'll be a better football team than they were last year. So um, if that's the case, Dan O., what if Russell Wilson can make a bounce-back season after really a yes. disastrous what? first season there in Denver? 
You know, Russell Wilson will bounce back this year. He has no choice but to. Or, or he goes down as the worst tr trade in the history of the NFL. That, he, he has no other option. Russ was this guy that was drafted in the third round, and he had no other option but to succeed and find a way to work his way up the ladder. And he was building a what many believe to be a Hall of Fame career. And, and I believe that he was a great quarterback. And I don't think you just fall from greatness unless one of two things happen. You either get injured or you stop working. And I don't know if these reports are true, but there are reports that Russ is like back in better shape and he was out of shape last year and he looks a lot better this year. And if he did, I guess, drop off with the work ethic last year and that explains some of the lack of connection between him and his performance and his offensive coordinator, then Russ is going to have a big bounce back year. But for a guy that has had the journey that he has had, He's done it by outworking everybody. He has no choice but to bounce back this year. Like, I think this is one of the things you could take to the bank. Russell Wilson is going to play this season the way Russell Wilson has for the great majority of his career because he has no other choice but to. You, know, you talk about work, and we mm -hmm. see the video I there. I mean, yeah, he's leaner. Jump rope in. Yeah, he's leaner. He's skating side what, to what side. Do you think, Look what, at me go. What do you think about what Dan just said? Do you see him having a bounce back year, Kmart? And yes. I know for years we kept saying, I can't believe he hasn't been MVP. Could mm -hmm. he have an MVP type season now he's got Sean Payton and got some new pieces there in Denver? Brian, let's just pump the brakes on MVP season. Uh, uh, you know who threw more touchdowns? You know who threw more touchdowns than Russell Wilson last year? Who? Daniel Jones. Davis Mills. Davis Mills. Davis Mills, Justin Fields. Like, I, I forget the MVP talk for a second. I just want Russell Wilson to throw more touchdowns than those two guys. That's it. Because no. the bar was so <laughs> low. It no, was it can't be so low. No, no, no. I'm saying the bar for where he, the, this offense was, where sure. Russell was last year, the, it was embarrassing based off of the career that he has had. And Russ, I'm sure, I'm not speaking out of turn. I'm sure Russ, if he was sitting here and being honest, he would say, yeah, that was embarrassing. That's not me. So forget MVP for a second. You got Sean Payton. He's in a great position with a great coach to resurrect this, his career and to change the narrative. So MVP, let's pump the brakes on yeah, that. But, let's but just see this Broncos offense say. be functional. Yes, Daniel. Here's what I would say, Kimberly. If he like barely eclipses last year's touchdowns. And let's, throw, let's say he throws 20 touchdowns and it's mm -hmm. more than Justin or Davis Mills. They're probably looking for a new quarterback. Mm. Uh, they, 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 aren't, they didn't make this trade and they didn't pay Sean Payton what they paid him to sit here and say, hey, we got a guy to throw 20 touchdowns. I mean, he's got to play MVP level football again for this trade to somewhat pay dividends. I will say, in defense of your Cowboys, yes. that it's very difficult to pro project that the Eagles will be just as good or Thank better you. than Thank you. Better than they were last year because they were so good. Can Jalen Hurts actually be even better than he was last year? Can, like They were unstoppable to, for the most part. So that's, that's why I will say Dallas can creep up and catch the Eagles because you can't expect them to be that good. I will say, though, that the Giants – are an improved team. If Washington is as confident as if Sam Howell can be as good as they expect him to be, I don't think that it's just, oh, well, the Cowboys are going to overtake the Eagles and that's the end of the NFC East. I, I, they've got competition throughout that division. I am so sorry, Brian. Dano, here, Dano I got to hear your, your thoughts on this because it's been like, what, two decades since you've had a repeat champion in the division. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Eagles can't be <laughs> that's any what he's better. To. They were phenomenal, but they did lose two important coordinators. Yes. Jalen Hurts can't be any better than he was last year. He was unbelievable. You really believe that Jalen Hurts is going to have another Speaking season like, like that? Man. You is believe he he's going to go backwards? I don't I didn't say backwards, but do you really believe he will repeat? I mean, he If based, Jalen stays still. Let me ask still, you this. It's very Let me ask you this, Brian. <laughs> We've been watching and this is coming from the guy that was Carson Wentz Full goal. Yes. Oh, we remember. Yes. We've yeah. watched Jalen Hurts play quarterback for like six or seven years now, both in college and the NFL. Have you ever seen him not get better? That's a good point. It's a good point. Mm. I, 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 this I is what I'd got say. You there. This is what I would say <laughs> about Demarcus Lawrence's comments. He's absolutely correct. He is 100% spot on. The gap isn't that big. The gap has actually been closed. Now. The, the Eagles still have 
um, advantages in basically every situation. I think they're better coached. I think they have a better skill group. I think they have a better quarterback. I think they have a better running back room, better tight end, better wide receiver group. Um, I, I think the, the, the Cowboys have to win on the defensive line, and I've said this. That's why Mozzie Smith, their first-round draft pick out of Michigan, is probably under more pressure than anybody outside of Dak Prescott on their football team. The gap has absolutely been closed in relation from the Dallas Cowboys to the Philadelphia Eagles, but the Eagles are still the favorite. Did you hear what he said? The gap has been closed, but they basically have the advantage in absolutely every single category. Dak Prescott so. took a lot I mean, of darts, but NFC he's going to be better. He's going to be better. <laughs> Dak Prescott will be better, Dan O. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.